Greetings, I'm Demonac, and it's arena time. Alright, well I'm still hunting after that mythical 10 plus win arena run now that the caps been raised to 12. I just did Rogue. You all know how I feel about arena warriors, and in particular how I personally do with them. So we're going to go Shaman. Shamans have a great ability for the arena, and often pretty good cards. Uh, let's see. Obviously not the pirate captain. There are not many pirates. He's not likely to work out. Big Game Hunter is pretty darn good in the arena. He can save your butt. But Faceless Manipulator can also save your butt against the same sort of things. I've seen him used a lot lately, and he's very effective. Plus, he doesn't require your enemy to have something that big in order for him to be fairly effective. So I'm going to go with the Faceless. We have Alarmobot, which I'm not a big fan of. Mind Control Tech is fine, you know. I mean, if he ever gets his ability off, he's amazing. And even if he doesn't, he's fine for the cost. But I'm going to go with the Demolisher. I really like the Demolisher's ability to kill stuff without taking damage back, even if it is random. Ancestral Healing does let me give something taunt and cost zero. And it heals them, but eh. You know what else heals a minion to full health? Returning into my hand with an Ancient Brewmaster. We have, ooh, Stormpike Commando is not that great, but Spellbreaker or Yeti is tough. Because obviously the Yeti is much, much better for fighting and for, like, beating through your opponent, but the Spellbreaker solves problems pretty well. I don't know how much, I don't know what exactly I'm going to end up with here, but... Damn, that's a tough choice. It's... Probably a bad idea, but I'm going to take the Spellbreaker, even though they tend to fail me in combat. Like, it's so... Like, the difference between 3 and 5 hit points for the same cost, it is so much easier to kill the Spellbreaker. But silencing an enemy is very strong, and I don't want to give that up. Uh, it's very hard to turn down Flame Tongue Totems. They're amazing. And these two guys are both kind of... They're both fine, but I don't think anyone would describe either of them as amazing. Maybe Leper Gnomes in a Warlock deck, if you could get, like, just... If your deck was ten Leper Gnomes <laughs> hit with a Warlock, that would be pretty rough. But no, we'll take that Flame Tongue Totem. Even then, I don't know if it'd be great, but it would be tempting. Ancestral Healing, again, I don't like that card all that much. I don't have any Taunt yet, but this to generally doesn't give me enough to warrant having the card here. As strong as it can be. Raid Leader is tempting with the Totems. Between Raid Leader and Dragonling Mechanic is... Shaman can't... Because the Shaman generates totems, because the totems are less fragile than even than the Paladin, like, 1-1 one, one guys, the Raid Leader can have a lot of potential. Uh, Dragonling Mechanic gives me a Yeti worth of stats spread over two creatures and would combo well with the Raid Leader. Oh, boy. My stuff's skewing a little bit expensive right now. I'm going to take the Raid Leader, but it's probably dumb, because the other one's more efficient. Uh, I don't have any creature-killing stuff yet, so I am taking the Fork Lightning for sure. Even though those other two creatures would actually be fine. The Shocks are pretty good, but Fire Elemental is amazing. He's fat, he's fine for the cost, and his ability will generally kill a creature. Plus, you can just use it to burn down your opponent faster. Dust Devil, I'm not as big a fan of, because, as we all know, he's super fragile. If he survives long enough to win Fury, and if your opponent has no taunt creatures, then he can do a ton of damage relative to his mana cost. But he's got that overload as well. Like, I really just don't like him. I don't... I'm... Spiteful Smith would be awesome if I had any Shaman weapons, because the Shaman weapons all have a lot of durability. You get a lot of uses out of them. But I haven't seen any yet, and I think they're both rare or epic. So I'm going to take the Fairy Dragon, who I'm in Constructed, I'm starting to find, like, this is a very good card, just because it's a very strong second turn play. Most things that you play second turn, your opponent can usually just kill them. Not that. Oh, this is hard. Uh, not for the Ancient Watcher. I've, I've seen some Warlocks that get that have enough different combos that use the Ancient Watcher that I can sort of see why they play him, but even then I'm not that sold. For pretty much any other deck, it's just not worth it. But Abomination is amazing. 
so is Lava Burst. I think what it in the end sells it is that I'm the one who's generating creatures with two toughness, preferably like often. And I think the Abomination is just going to be more harmful to me more often than it should be. In most decks, I would probably take the Abomination with most classes, but I'm going to go with the Lava Burst, which is a super powerful nuking spell. Oh, do I want Forked Lightning or Yeti? You don't want too, too many Fork Lightnings, because your opponent does have to have two creatures, like, in the... And if you're using it super early game, when you could be wiping out their whole army, it, the Overload hurts you a lot. I think I'm going to go with the Yeti, because he's got more sort of game-winning power often, but it's not a guarantee. Priestess of a Loon is the one I don't like. The one that heals... The one that costs one less is a 4-5, and... He, restores two health to you and to each of your minions. I find the other priestess, just like the other healer type thing like this, better in every way. I would rather have a 4-5 than a 5-4. I would rather heal two to myself and all my minions than just four to myself, because healing the minions is more valuable than two extra health. And I definitely wouldn't pay more for this version. If she cost five, then she'd be very good. But even if this one costs 5, I would like the other one better, the 4-5. So, yeah. Do I want the Geomancer, who is amazing if I can get more direct damage? So far, I just have a couple. Or the Iron Beak Owl, which is also pretty amazing. I think because I took the other Silence guy, I can afford to take the Geomancer. Hope I get more damage spells. I at least have one thing in here that silences. Uh... If I knew if I was getting any weapons, the Spiteful Smith would be very attractive, but I don't know that. The Young Dragonhawk's never very attractive. It's just too fragile, and even if I have stuff to boost it, like, yeah, if I if I had Bloodlust go off, it would be amazing. But this still has to survive a turn before that would even help. I think I'm going to take the Ventrico Mercenary. I have a fair amount of, like mid-end to mid -end kind of expensive, semi-expensive creatures already, but he is giant fat, and I can still make totems without being without getting hosed by his ability. And I'm going to have two ancient brewmasters that I could use to bounce him if things got ugly, although that's a really crappy solution because the brewmaster would cost me seven. Uh, loot Hoarder is nice for the card drawing, but fire elementals are amazing for killing stuff. And I'm starting to really want more 2 and 3 cost creatures now, based on the, the curve of my deck. But I'm not turning down a Fire Elemental, because if you get enough... I could play with a ton of Fire Elementals, and as soon as I hit 6 mana, I'm just going to be blowing up stuff left and right. I'm just going to have to survive that long. Oh, this is tough. I want to get some some cheaper creatures now. Like, the Tiger is great and all, but I'm starting to want more cheap things. I wish I could get the... Uh, the Harvest Golem from the last set instead of this. But I don't want the stupid Murloc, especially since it benefits your opponent's Murlocs, if they have any. And I don't think... I don't like Totemic Might. I just find it to be a pretty weak-ass card, so I guess I'm taking a Tiger. Out of these, I'm definitely taking the Flesh-Eating Ghoul. He, I think he's the best anyway, but I also need to have like the cheaper creatures. And he goes well with Totems. Oh, the Bloodlust or the Flame Tongue. Tidehunter is good too, but he loses out to f these. These are super amazing cards. I wish I could have taken him instead of the Tiger, but because I do need cheaper creatures. But Flame Tongue Totem is so good. Like it just it turns the other totems, even the non-attacking ones, into brutal beatdown machines. If your opponent can't kill this, then it lasts and it's amazing. Bloodlust is a finisher. I'd lo I want to have at least one in here, but I think I have to take the Flame Tongue Totem because it's so versatile and amazing. Okay, this is my next fixed rare, and we've got the Garbage Bot, who I don't like. Although, I have so many semi-expensive creatures in here, he's almost worth it, but even then, not really. Especially since this he triggers, I don't even think I get the battle cry, so I'd be really gypped on the Fire Elementals. The Blood Sail Corsair is not good, especially for a rare. Like, one, two for one is not great. When it, when it's a one-cost creature, 
you don't really care if it has one or two hit points. It's the same thing. You'd rather just have the two one. Even though I sort of start to feel differently when they get bigger. Now his ability remove one durability from your opponent's weapon. He is almost as good as the Acidus's weapon killing ability. If you think about it, the vast majority of weapons only have two uses on them. And when the person plays a weapon, they attack with it right away, almost always. So most of the time, an Acidus would blow up a weapon with one use left, and this guy will blow up a weapon with one use left. So at least half the time, he's going to actually kill their weapon, just as well as the Acidus, and for cheaper. But he's the Acidus is like a decent-sized creature, and he's not. And Young Priestess is better than him. She's a 2-1 instead of a 1-2, which is better. And you can, if you have another creature out, you play her and you get her ability right away. So it's pretty reliable. Um, this is this is the kind of stuff I need. I got to figure out which one I want. Obviously, I'm not taking the croc because being a beast in some decks is actually useful, but mostly just for hunters. Berserker is pretty sweet. The Voodoo Doctor could be good too. I might take a lot of beatings because my deck is looking a little slow. So that little extra healing might help. But also, I, my deck is slow because it has a lot of fat things. And healing two to one of my fat guys is actually, it could potentially keep that minion alive for another attack. Having said all that, I think I'm going to take the Berserker. It's a little tougher. <coughs> Ooh. No. We know I don't like these guys. The Unbound Elemental is pretty good, really. Because a 2-4 four for 3 is actually just good stats. If, if it was a 2-4 four for 3 with no abilities, you wouldn't take him. But a 2-4 four for 3 is good enough that it's worth taking the guy even if you might not get to use his ability. Now, my deck is 2 thirds complete. And I only have, what, about 2 overload cards? So he's less useful in my deck than in the average Shaman deck, for sure. I'm going to take the Wind Speaker because I have all these large guys. Like, if I have a Fire Elemental out, and then next turn, the Fire Elemental is ready to attack, and I play the Wind Speaker, that can be a game-winning move right there. The Wind Speaker is still, like, a 3-3 for 4. He's not that overcosted, even if you can't use his ability. Do I want another Spellbreaker or another Fire Elemental? Might get screwed, sort of like the Cone of Cold deck, but this is different. Like, the Fire Elemental is more concentrated killing power, and he is itself a creature. So, I don't think I can go wrong by just stacking a million Fire Elementals. I think having t too many Fire Elementals is even harder than having too many Iron Bark Protectors in a Druid deck. Fire Elemental is always going to be useful. Once I get... As long as I live long enough to start casting six-cost creatures. Um... I have a bunch of things that boost creatures, but most of my creatures are a little bit more expensive. I'm actually thinking I don't need another Raid Leader as much as I'd like the Iron Beak Owl. Maybe I should take the Earth Shock, though. I have hardly anything that kills creatures other than Fire Elementals. And this would also give me Silence, but this would also give me a creature. You know what? I have so little burn... I think I'm actually going to take the Earth Shock. Maybe a mistake. I should probably take the Owl, but I'm going to go with that. Um, see, normally I'd be looking, oh, well, I should get at least some fat creature. I don't need him. I have lots of fat. I have lots of fat fire elementals, which are a way better use of a card slot than he is. And I've got Ventricle Mercenary and a Tiger, a Faceless Manipulator. Like, I've got a lot of stuff here. I'm going to take the Hex, because I don't have anything like that that just... Well, the only thing, other thing I have that kills a really big creature is Lava Burst. Out of these guys, take the Dire Wolf Alpha, who is good for the totems and stuff like that. Because, again, like, the totems tend to sit around and not always get attacked. And since they're already in play, this is usually going to be like making a creature with one attack and charge out of one of those totems. On the other hand, the Elemental is still pretty good. And the Earth Ring Farseer is still 3-3 three, three for 3, which is fine. And that healing would be good for me, because my deck's a little slow. Or it would be good for Fire Elementals, because I have lots of big creatures to keep alive. I need 2 and 3 cost stuff pretty much equally badly. 
Oh, boy. I'm going to take the dire wolf out, but I'm going to try and put my totems to work. I don't have a bloodlust yet, so I need something. I have virtually no taunt, if any. But this is the shield. Taking a shield bearer, shield bearer instead of one of these guys seems pretty sad. I'm going to take another wind speaker. I think I have enough big things here that this is potentially game winning for me. Or at least helps me clear the board a lot. And I have so little taunt, but you're so puny and not that strong. I want the Acolyte of Pain, draw cards. I think I need the, the healing from the Farseer more, and his slightly better size. I don't need your bigness, especially your fragile bigness. Like, he costs... Compare him to the Fire Elementals. You expect the Fire Elementals to be better because they're class-specific. Like, they, they have more points to go in terms of... If you're rating the cards by points, and I'm sure the developers do to some degree, he's got more points to spend because he's class-based. He can be at least one point better than everything else, whatever their scale of points is. But look, for one more mana, the Core Hound has three more attack, but this guy does that three damage right away, so that three more attack is only good if this guy gets to attack more than once, whereas this guy got to... His, he has three damage that basically has charge, and he doesn't take damage back for using it. He's much better. I should probably take another Hex... But I don't have that many cheap creatures, and I have virtually no taunt. I think I'm actually going to take the Frostwolf Grunt, who I normally never take. But I think he's filling a role in this deck, and oh my god. Like, normally you just take Twilight Drakes, but I have a lot of fat. I have a lot of four-cost stuff. You know what I don't have? A lot of amazingly efficient taunt creatures, which Feral Spirit is amazing. So I'm going with that for sure. And there we have it. This is one of those decks where if it can get up to the Fire Elementals point and just start casting Fire Elementals, I've got a good chance. I think I did manage to even out my casting cost curve somewhat. I now have a reasonable number of two-cost creatures and stuff. And a few three-costs and you know, lots of four and five. I also don't have anything more expensive than six. So, yeah, we'll see how it goes. I'm going to try and use totems a lot, if I can. Conserve the cards in my hand, because I can use them later. And every turn I don't use the totem, it is kind of like losing half a card. So we're going to pitch the Fire Elemental, because I've got tons of them. I'll probably get another one in my hand. No. Nice. That's better than having another Fire Elemental in my hand. Because I'm not going to be able to use them for a while. And Flame Tongue Totem is awesome. Got nothing to do with the start. And even if my opponent casts a creature, I probably still can't do anything with the Fork Lightning. I'm going to try and use the Totem power a lot. Because every turn I don't use it, it is like losing a half or a third of a card. I can save these cards by just putting out a Totem. And he doesn't kill the Totem in one shot, unless it's the 1-1. One, one. So... We're going to try that. It is the 1-1. That's kind of funny how bad a matchup that is, but eh, it'll still eat his attack for one round, I guess. It would have been much better to get any other totem in this particular case. Even though normally I'd rather have the 1-1 one -one than the healing totem. Celebi. Ooh, he did not play something else. So it's tempting to just play the Flame Tongue and do some attacking, and I might. But I've also got the... I can now Fork Lightning and kill both his guys. It will deny me mana for my next turn. Next turn I would have four mana. If I cast this, I'm only going to have two. But there's no way it's not worth it to wipe out two minions at this stage of the game. I think I have to do that. Now... Do I play the Flame Tongue Totem and hit him for two extra now? Or do I just make another Totem and hope that next turn I can put out the Flame Tongue and do just as much damage? If neither of the Totems die, then I'll do just as much damage by casting this next turn. But I'll have another Totem out. That's what I'm thinking. I could also play this guy, which would be more aggressive. But I think I'm going to save him and keep make, taking advantage of the Totems. Again, it's, it's not like my opponent has anything out that would make my life harder that way. 
and a spell power totem. That might be worrisome for him. He might spend effort killing the spell, the Wrath of Air totem, just because I might have more spells. I know that I don't, because I have hardly any spells in here. I've got, like, three damage-dealing spells. But my opponent has no idea that. He just sees I cast a damage spell, and now I've got a spell damage totem. So it probably feels like this is something he should deal with. What's he up to? Silver moon shall not fall. Hmm. That guy's going to be a little annoying. I only have two mana. His bubble makes him pretty survivable. I'm going to have to trade both of my totems to kill him if I want to kill him. If I play the Flame Tongue Totem, then I definitely need to kill him because I, I can't have him just kill my Flame Tongue Totem. These things are amazing. Anything else I play, this guy can pretty much just kill. Unless I got... There's a 50-50 chance I could get a Taunt Totem, but what am I really gaining by doing that? Like, hit my opponent for one? No. I, if I play the Flame Tongue Totem, I can... Lose this to kill his bubble, and then I can lose this to kill his guy, which is not very good. But again, these didn't cost me cards, they just cost me time and mana. So I'm going to have a lot more cards in my hand than he is. I'm going to give this a try, even though it's probably silly. Probably a waste. Because I was setting up for it all this time, and then now all I have is this. I don't have charged creatures in here. I could potentially return it to my hand with the Brewmaster if it doesn't just die. My opponent might just kill it, and then that's what happened. It sort of did its job. It caused two token creatures, which are each kind of like a third of a card, or half of a card, to kill his actual card. It's not the worst. That's interesting and fragile. I don't have charge, though. I'm not going to have a good way to get rid of that. That's actually kind of worrisome. Hmm. I don't know how I can get rid of that. I don't want to bounce this and put on my Brewmaster now, because the Brewmaster will just get killed by this garbagey 5 1 creature. Silencing it doesn't help. It's not that good out. So, if I play the Demolisher. He can kill the Demolisher and lose his guy, or he can kill the Flame Tongue Totem and have a 50-50 chance of losing his guy on my turn. And I can still use Totemic Call here, which has a 1 in 3 chance to give me the Taunt Totem, which would be amazing for stopping this guy. I could also put out these two instead of this. which point I'm pretty sure he would definitely just kill that, but I don't know. He might get confused by all the targets. Let's start off by seeing if I get the taunt to him. Even though that means I'm leaving this thing vulnerable. Nope. The plus one hit health from her wouldn't help any. I'm just gonna play the demolisher. I don't like leaving the Flame Tongue Totem out there to die, but I didn't really want this guy to die in his place just to kill a one toughness creature. I should be able to get more out of him somehow. Okay. So my prediction is that he kills the Flame Tongue Totem, because that's what bugs me the most, but he might just kill the this. It's just as valid. Oh, he's going to kill the Flame Tongue that way, because he doesn't take damage from it, from using his Kung Fu Claw. His Iron Claw attack. Now he can kill this. Yeah, that works out pretty well for him. Oh, I'm up to Fire Elemental time. I'm not going to do that yet. No, 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 no. Or am I? It seems silly and aggressive, but... But I know that I have a Wind Speaker in my hand, which would make it stronger. I also know that I have a lot more Fire Elementals, so the fact that I'm losing the ability to kill one of his minions with this isn't as bad. Instead of that, though, I am kind of thinking of playing the Brewmaster instead. Attack first, bounce the 
Brew, so the Brewmaster is almost as good a target for the Wind Speaker, and it lets me save this guy's ability. So I think that's what I'm going to do for sure. Hit him. That was a very slow attack. Then we're going to bounce this, which I don't know if they cost zero or one. Cost one to replay it. Okay. Now, do I just make another totem? Or do I play the Young Priestess to boost his attack? Or his toughness, I mean. I think I'm going to... I should really use the totem. Just get a totem. They're free. In fact, I should have done that before bouncing this, because I, it might have given me another one of these totems, which I don't think is the best. I think I could get two of the same totem if I just keep bouncing the totems. But, I don't know. Like, I'm assuming that it's only, that it's determining this based on what ones are in play and not in my hand. But I could be wrong, it might just know what totems exist. They are bent to my command. Okay, he can beat this guy, so that's not very good. So the Fire Elemental can't really kill that guy at all. This guy is going to kill my Brewmaster pretty much no matter what next turn. Especially if I use the Wind Speaker to give him Wind Fury. Now, if I do that, there is a 1 in 3 or so chance that the Young Priestess might buff him. There's also the 1 in 3 chance that the Totemic Call would give me the Taunt Totem. Which I could boost to a 50-50 chance if I replay my Searing Totem first. I'm going to try this anyway, because you know what? If he trades this guy for him, that's okay after I've done 10 damage and still have stuff in play. Feel the power. Another round. I could be fairly certain he's going to want to do that. I mean, he might, he might just kill this guy with something else. But, yeah, I'm going to play the Searing Totem first, because I want to get a Taunt Totem if I can. Yay! It was either that or Healing. Healing Totem would not have helped me very much, I feel. Although, I'm getting to the point where it might start to... I have a fair-sized army. Now, the, he, he may have access to druid AoE spells, like the area effects. There's the Starfall. Are there any... There's Starfall and Swipe. Swipe is a common card. Starfall is rare, so he probably... It's harder for him to count on getting one of those, but he could have two or even three Swipes, potentially. Uh, that'll stop my uh, Kung Fu Panda pretty good. as a big guy. On the other hand, I can silence him with a Spellbreaker would leave me with four mana. Now, doing three damage to him with the Fire Elemental is actually going to do less for me than silencing him with the Spellbreaker. I think the Spellbreaker is guaranteed the best move here. Your magic shall and then it's a question of what I do from there. My opponent's at 21. I can hit him for 10, 13, 14 damage. Wow. And it's going to take more effort to actually kill either of these guys. More effort than it's worth, frankly. So, I could play another Brewmaster. Like, I could attack with this guy and then bounce him with the Brewmaster, so that next turn I could use the Wind Speaker again on any of my guys who are still alive. That seems like a very good way to get the kill, but on the other hand, we know that he's going to be able to kill this guy easily. I'm thinking I'm going to go try and get a Taunt Totem, and then I can also play this guy. Nope, no taunt to him. This guy gives me taunt, though. He can still kill the panda, but at this point, there is so much junk out there, he's going to have a hard time stopping them. Especially since I can do three damage to him directly with the fire elemental. It doesn't have to kill creatures, because it's awesome. Seven hit points is not a good place to be. He could play an Ancient of Lore and heal himself for five, but that would just be kind of delaying things. Although he would be able to wipe out a lot of my army. That could wipe out a lot of my army. Now I'm hoping he doesn't kill the Spellbreaker. Because if I can bounce the Spellbreaker and then silence this guy, 
Oh, he's gonna give taunt to that too? Yeah. That's getting harder to penetrate. Yeah, he can kill that, and then he can kill the panda. That did, does put a crimp in my ability to kill him. So, I can wipe out everything in play if I just I hit this guy for three, and then hit him for four, and then he does two damage to everything, which will hit this guy, finish him off, kill all my stuff. Then I shoot my opponent for three. I can also, I can play the panda who would survive, but that would not allow me to do this. And I wouldn't be able to get back this guy with the panda in, well, not because I need him to do the three damage to that guy. I could bounce the Spellbreaker and silence one of these guys. But I wouldn't have enough mana left to play the Fire Elemental. I still have to break through the other one of these guys. Probably the, oops, I don't think it's going to work. Ah! I think I'm going to go with playing kill everything. I don't have that much choice. I'm going to... <sighs> Just ran out of time for casting things. It was a complicated scenario. There's probably... A, there's got to be a, def a better way I could have played that. If I had another... 10 seconds after the timer started, then I could have played more stuff for sure. I could have played him and another totem, which would have been much better. But I still only have to do 2 damage to him next turn to kill him with this. Maybe 3 damage if he uses his power. Neither of those have taunt. Oh, so he's dead. Okay. Once again, I did an extra step for fun for me, but I didn't waste too much of his time before killing him. Just try and be somewhat sportsmanlike. Okay, well, that was a pretty decent start. A very tight sort of casting cost here. I have I ended up with a fair amount of two and three cost stuff to keep me in the game. And then if I can get up to the higher end things, I've got some pretty interesting tricks with two wind speakers, two brew masters, and four fire elementals. Well, we'll see how much further I can take it next time. Put the hammer down on that like button. And don't forget to subscribe to Demon Knight Games for more Hearthstone Arena and other gaming videos.